All right, here is a preview of the tier list designer, which is coming to the website soon, hopefully. Um, it might still have a few uh, bugs here and there, but it seems to work. <laughs> so uh, the first thing you do is you pick which um, pack or set of pets or items that you want, because we've got food as well, um, to do the tier list for. Uh, most of them are fairly sensible. Uh, it is actually getting to the point now where if you try and do a tier list for all pets, it is an obscene number and it takes forever. So um, for the purposes of the video, I think I'm just going to pick one of the tiers and let's just go with tier one. So it just gives you the page as you would expect, much like the other tier list websites out there. Um, the I, I have actually tried to do the, a tier one tier list before and it was uh, it took me like an hour. So let's just try and do this rapid fire. Okay. I think everyone probably agrees on most of the, the top, top um, tier one pets. Maybe not all of them, but I think I've mentioned a lot of these before. Let's uh, stick Sloth up there, of course. Maybe I should have had Sloth tier above S. Um, uh, Kiwi, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's narrow this down. So, okay, let's put, I think we'll go for Bluebird A. Still very good, even though it's... Um, it can't focus buffs onto one pet. Um, I don't know if I have need to explain why any of these are so good. I've talked about them so many times in videos. Like Seahorse is absolutely insane. Um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna in order to keep this this short. I'm just gonna have to uh, try and okay. Mosquito. There's another one that was is obviously a, a top uh, pick. And once you've dropped them in the tier, if you drag them and move them over. You can reorder them if you want to, although I'm not putting these in any particular order. Um, what else? Uh, duck, Marmoset. Mm, I mean, you could argue that they're A, but just based on stats, but maybe uh, maybe I'd put these guys in B. Um, I think, uh, where's the worst of the worst? Well, we've got Cockroach. I mean, Cockroach maybe isn't as bad as it used to. Are there any really F tier, tier ones? I'm not sure. Uh, of course, Bulldog, I mean, within, um, i got to put that at the top, within uh, the Golden Pack itself, it's pretty good, but outside it's uh, totally busted. Chinchilla, I would put A as well, I think. Um, just being, it's so flexible being able to double sell, um, you know, if you roll down to one gold and then you can still double sell the Chinchilla and, and buy something else. Um, but also you can roll down to two gold single cell still have a two two unit and then buy something else so very useful pig i think pig is not great on the uh, the early turns but then um you know when you get later on it just it's great for uh, buy selling especially with things like alpaca um increasing its value i don't know i know there's a lot of people that think pig is really good but I think uh, because there's so many people playing Mosquito in turns one and two, it's just uh, you're practically throwing those early turns. Goose, yeah, probably pretty bad, I would say. Um, is it as bad as Cockroach? Maybe. Ability is pretty useless. It, it's it's okay in the in the Golden Pack where um, it's kind of it's there to work with uh, Bulldog and uh, Silk Moth just to make the Bulldog even stronger, but. Um, I think in general, pretty, pretty useless. Um, horse, I think I really rated horse low last time, but um, it's, it's fine. I mean, where would I put it? C maybe? As much as it's one of the most annoying units of the game, it is still pretty good early because, you know, if you pair it with cricket and honey and spider and so on, you know, you're winning most of your rounds, I would say. Um, despite mos Mosquito potentially sniping it. I mean, you're going for level 2 horse as soon as possible anyway. Uh, I guess in that vein, we could probably put Cricket in here. Um, I mean, pr Cricket in pack 1 is pretty good at the back with, uh, you know, Cricket last position and middle position. Um, but ultimately, it just becomes incredib an incredible liability when you're summoning an incredibly weak unit that then triggers Kangaroo and Camel and all the rest of the... the um, the pets that uh, benefit from it. I think Groundhog is pretty bad. Um, but I think they've definitely made an effort in the Golden Pack to make the um, the Tier 1s uh, pretty weak across the board so that you're incentivized to replace them as soon as possible. 
and you know bad stat line bad ability um it may be maybe ground groundhog could go down here i don't know um let's just put it f so that something is in f magpie i think magpie's ability is pretty garbage um I mean, I know people have discovered recently that it, you know you can use it with puppy and so on in customs or weeklies. Uh, turn one, one four stat line. Maybe you know magpie moth is okay, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, however, you know as soon as you stack a couple of them together, you know if you've got once you get to level two magpie, it's three five, which is uh, pretty decent. But because the ability is so bad, you're not really going to want to keep it for any length of time. I don't know. Let's move on. Uh, what else? Ladybug. I think uh, I think you could make a case for Ladybug still being S, but I'll just I'm just going to put it in A um, for just now. You can create an absolutely gigantic Ladybug in all sorts of ways, um, and there's no re not really any incentive to sell it. So I think that's definitely one of the stronger tier ones. Uh, Pillbug. I think Pillbug's very good. Um, you know, being able to get permanent health scaling um, and target it onto specific units is good. I mean, the fact that it's every two turns is a bit irritating, but I think if it was every turn, it would be too good. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's fair enough. Um, I think Beetle, I'm going to put that in C based just on the stat line, or is it? Yeah, I, I think I think it's uh, these two are better because they're... Even though their abilities aren't amazing, they're better than this because you don't want to be feeding the beetle. It's a real waste of uh, gold for a little bit of health on a unit that you then have to keep frozen in the shop and waste uh, shop space. So I think we'll go C just now for that. Uh, beaver. I know. I think a lot of people rate beaver as well for having three attack off the off the bat. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, justifiable to put it in the same tier as duck. Hummingbird, I think, is A. I don't think very many people use it in um, custom packs, at least. But, you know, with three three hummingbirds and one strawberry, you're getting, what is it, uh, plus six, plus three or something. And it, you'll find in pack three, people just don't sell their hummingbird. They just keep it forever because the extra stats are, uh, are so good. Chipmunk, I mean, similar to Beaver, it's uh, three, two. However... I mean, I think you can make a case that its ability is a lot better than Beaver's. Uh, is it A? I think it could be A. Um, you know, if you get a level 2 chipmunk and you pill a turtle onto the chipmunk and then sell it and you're getting two melons for four gold and then you're recovering two gold from selling the chipmunk, I mean, I think that is very good. I mean, maybe you could argue that it's A. The only thing is in the golden pack, I don't think it's quite so good because... You're restricted on what you can give it. You know, you you can give it cherry early, but very quickly cherry becomes pretty useless. Um, I guess there's eggplant. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't think in the golden pack you're keeping chipmunk as long as you can justify keeping it in uh, the other game modes. But I haven't spent a great amount of time thinking about this, so let's uh, let's just leave it in A. Cone snail, terrible stats. Okay ability, I guess. Um, especially within the like outside the golden pack, I don't think you ever see people using this. But inside golden pack, especially early, there's so few ways to get health. So having, uh, I mean, permanent health. Um, so having the cone snail on your team, giving, you know, giving stats to the unit that you've got um, high attack on that you really want to have uh, better health, is pretty good. And obviously, it pairs well with bulldog. So, but. I mean, one, two stats is um, is rough, so I think we'll put that in uh, C. Duckling. Um, I don't know. Duckling. I feel like duckling probably belongs here as well. I mean, there are some situations where you can create really powerful units by selling, like, five ducklings, but you're tanking, like, two or three rounds to do that, probably. And I guess you do get health back now. So gaining one heart back on turn three maybe makes Duckling could be B. But I think most of the time you just don't see people using it very often um, because, you know, you're losing all those early rounds and then you're gambling that you're going to find something worthwhile to sell them onto on turn three. 
fish. I think fish. I mean, fish is one a strange one because you could possibly justify putting in S because the game doesn't really punish you for just running the early game over and over and over until you get all the fish you need to do the uh, triple level up. Um, so, you know, if you do that in a particular run, you know, it's up here. But what are the odds of that happening? You're probably going to need to play four or five games before you get it. Um, I don't know what the actual odds are, but, you know, to, pro probably I think it's fair, safe enough to put fish in A, although... You know, it uh, has uh, delusions of grandeur for S tier, I think. Uh, Frill Dragon, bit of a strange one, I think. Can You know, you can get Frill Dragon in weekly packs where it's absolutely useless. Um, but I honestly think when you have control over it, I think it's probably A. Um, you know, it's similar to Hummingbird in that although it, it, it's generating so many stats, even though they're temporary in battle, if you keep them for the entire game... You're, this, if you keep the pet for the entire game, the stats are are basically permanent. So, um, and it also doesn't like with hummingbird in customs, you can have your strawberry overwritten by weakness. Um, whereas the filled dragon's getting the stats regardless. Um, I definitely think it's uh, very good. Although I almost never buy it these days. Uh, frog, frog's kind of weird because it's similar to duckling in that it. You're, you're tanking early <laughs> rounds just to take it. But at the same time, being able to transfer the stats of anything onto another unit uh, can be extremely good because it means you can use stuff like, um, uh, you know, Kiwi to spam buffs onto literally anything and then transfer it later uh, onto something more useful. However, you know, you can end up in a situation where you're, you're stuck or you you know you you've had the frog for so long, and it takes up space and it uses up you know it consumes um, random buffs from things like otter, um, so I don't know maybe maybe you could justify putting frog up, but I just uh, I don't know maybe it's not even B. I think it yeah I think it's not even B. Mm, that's a difficult one. All right, iguana. I feel like Iguana is pretty bad unless you have Seahorse as well. Um, there's so few situations where it's going to be useful. Is it C? I mean, I guess I've got Horse and Cricket and C. I mean, like, Iguana level 1 can only kill Cricket, B, and Ant from Anteater. And they rapidly become, like, they, you almost never see them, especially in uh, custom packs. In pack... Uh, in pack three, there's only Anteater. And even at level two, you're only doing two damage. So what's that going to kill? Something that comes out of a spider or a sheep? Maybe. Everyone's pilling their spiders in their custom packs. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's that good. And having one attack to begin with, you know, you really have to go for both Seahorse and uh, Iguana, I think. Uh, mouse? I think Mouse is good. Um... It's similar to Duckling in that you're tanking rounds just to take it at the beginning, but at least it has, I think, two attack, one health is always better than one attack, two health. Um, because at least you can trade one for one with teams that have like three fish or three kiwis or something that are going for uh, investing in the future. Um, but obviously it also suffers from similar issues to beaver, duck and um, kiwi in that, you know, you don't want to combine, you combine them, you actually get less value out of them. Um, except for discovering the, the pet on level up. So I don't know, maybe that's, maybe B is fair enough for uh, for mouse. A possum? Uh, I think a possum probably goes in this category as well. It's similar to beaver and duck. They've got, it's got good stats, but, um, you know, you, in order to get take advantage of its ability, you got to sell it pretty quick, and then you got to find a good faint unit. Um and then you've also got the problem of you could load up your pack with lots of faint units to make sure you've got something to sell onto, but then it's random. So if you've got multiple opossums, you would have to freeze your shop to only have one faint pet in it in order to stack all the buffs onto one pet. So it can be a little bit awkward in that respect, but it does have, it's one of the few ways to get good um, stats onto a unit early doors in, uh, in the golden pack because you can sell like five opossums onto uh, a squid or something 
or a um, or an osprey, say, and uh, and you know your opponent opposing teams are going to have a hard time dealing with that. Silk moth, silk moth at three one, I think is not as good as it was. Um, maybe it's maybe it's still maybe you could put it up in A, but I think I'll just put it in B. Um, you know, it basically exists to funnel stats into bulldog or opossum, so it is kind of. You know, if you get three silk moths in the first turn, it's now completely useless. Whereas, in uh, when they were two two, the silk moths could actually pass health to each other because they could potentially survive a one attack hit. Um, but I think that the stat change probably made sense, so it's not quite an auto take anymore. And finally, the tam the tamarin two. I'm not still not sure how to pronounce it. If it's pied tamarin, maybe. Uh, I need to look that up. Where does that go? Mm, one two stat line, not great. Um, I think, I think on like turns two and three, two three four, its ability can be quite good, especially level two where you're spending one trumpet to do what is it six damage or something. It, you you need some way of generating trumpets, so you're either having to take groundhog, or you're having to look for stilt, or you're having to buy cherry, which feels really bad. Um, I don't know, maybe it's not as bad as D, maybe it is a C. Uh, I don't know. Let's just wrap this up. There, there it is, that's how you <laughs> use the new uh, tier list designer. And um, if you have any ideas for other tier lists, if I just go back to the, uh, the main screen, if you've got any other ideas for things you'd like to see here, tier lists that you can uh, pick from, then um, you know, just let me know and I'll, uh, I'll add them in.